The acid-base properties of the amino acids are important to consider because their structures under physiological conditions, under biochemical conditions, may not be what we would expect at first glance. The amino acids contain amino and carboxylic acid groups, and the pKa's for these functional groups are in the range of typical pKa's that we see for other carboxylic acids and amines. So for example, the ammonium cation in an amino acid has a pKa of somewhere between 8.8 .8 and 10.6, which is typical of ammonium. And the carboxylic acid proton is much more acidic and has a pKa on the order of 1.8 to 2.4. Now this is a little bit lower, a little bit more acidic than 5, which is typical for a carboxylic acid. And the reason lower pKa's are observed for the carboxylic acid protons in amino acids is due to the inductive effect of the ammonium group here. So this is a pretty good withdrawing group, particularly at low pH values when there's positive charge on nitrogen. And this acidifies the carboxylic acid proton by putting positive charge in the vicinity of the carbonyl group. One way we could phrase this, and this is a term we'll return to again later, is that the ammonium group is modulating the pKa of the carboxylic acid through an inductive effect. We'll see pKa modulation in an enzyme context a little bit later in the course. But the basic idea is the same when we look at it there. The, the positive charge in the vicinity of this acidic group causes it to become more acidic stabilizing negative charge that develops as this proton is lost. Similar pKa modulation effects are observed in certain acidic side chains. For example, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, and cysteine are all somewhat lower than expected when we look at the side chain pKa's, which you can see in the table as the R group pKa's. While I don't want you to worry about memorizing these numbers, it is important to note some general trends, in particular this notion that the positively charged ammonium group acidifies a lot of the acidic functional groups in the amino acids, including the backbone carboxylic acid, as well as acidic groups in the side chain. Now, the reason we care about amino acid pKa's is that their major ionization states under physiological conditions are generally not neutral. One point we made in the general reactivity video is that amino acids are basic enough and acidic enough to react with themselves. This means that in any alpha amino acid, the neutral form is unstable with respect to the Zwitter ionic form. Spontaneous proton transfers will take place to generate the Zwitter ionic form whenever the neutral form is generated. And so, in fact, the correct form or ionization state of the amino acid to draw under physiological conditions at pH 7 is the Zwitter ion, the structure shown on the right here. More generally, to understand how the major ionization state depends on pH, we can return to an important equation that you learned in Chem 1212 that is based on acid-base equilibrium, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. In words, this equation states that the ratio of conjugate base to conjugate acid, what we might call the conjugate ratio for any conjugate acid-base pair, is equal to 10 to the power of the difference between the pH of the medium, in other words, the pH of the environment that the acid is dissolved in, and the pKa of the acid, of HA. At very high pH values, where pH is much greater than pKa, the right-hand side of this equation will be equal to 10 to a relatively large power, meaning that A- minus will dominate over HA. That means that basic pHs will have more of the conjugate base around, which is logical and should make chemical sense. Conversely, at low pHs, this number is going to be negative, meaning we'll have 10 to a very negative power on the right-hand side, meaning the HA concentration will be much greater than the A- concentration, resulting in HA dominating in solution at low pHs, which again makes sense. At acidic pH values, at low pH values, the conjugate acid form dominates in solution. When the pH is equal, to the pKa, this value reduces to 1, and that means we have equal amounts in solution of A- minus and HA. We can think of this point as a crossover from HA to A- minus or vice versa. It is the point at which these concentrations are equal, present in equal amounts. And so I kind of think of it as a dividing line between different ionization states. And by ionization state, we just mean 
the form of an amino acid or more broadly any structure involving addition or loss of protons to change the charge state of the molecule. Let's explore these ideas in the context of an example. Histidine, in its protonated form at very, very low pH values, has three important pKa's. The most acidic hydrogen is the carboxylic acid hydrogen, and this has a pKa of 1.82. The second most acidic proton is not the amino proton, but one of the protons linked to nitrogen in the imidazole ring. And finally, the least acidic protons in histidine are these ammonium protons. The pKa here is 9.17, and this is pretty typical for an ammonium group pKa. So now that we've laid out those pKa's, let's see what happens to the dominant or major ionization state, in other words, the species that's present in highest concentration in terms of the henderson hasselbalch equation, as we vary the pH of the medium that histidine finds itself in. The first key point, so here we're at a pH of negative 5. The first key point happens when we reach a pH of 1.82, the pKa of the most acidic proton in this molecule. This results in deprotonation at the carboxylic acid, such that the molecule drawn here is now the dominant ionization state in solution. The next key point happens at the next pKa, pKa of 6.00 for the imidazolium proton. When the medium in which the histidine is dissolved has a pH that's above 6, the medium is basic enough to deprotonate at this imidazolium proton. The other groups remain essentially unchanged because the medium isn't basic enough yet to deprotonate the ammonium group here, and we've already deprotonated the carboxylic acid to form a carboxylate. The final key point happens at the last or highest pKa value, 9.17, and now the medium is basic enough to deprotonate at the carboxylate, the imidazole ring, and the amino or ammonium group. One thing worth noting about this progression is that as we go from strongly acidic pHs, very low pH values, to strongly basic pH values, the charge on the amino acid is shifting from positive to negative. So we go from a situation where the amino acid has a total charge of plus 2 in this ionization state to one where the total charge has been decreased to minus 1 in the dominant ionization state under basic conditions. And this is typical. Under basic conditions, deprotonations will cause amino acids to take on more negatively charged structures. So the key takeaways from this discussion are that the pKa's are the dividing lines between different ionization states. Different ionization states are conjugates, they just differ by one proton at each jump across a pKa value. And as we move from acidic to basic conditions, we're going from ionization states with positive charge to ionization states with negative charge. Let's look at two more examples of applying the henderson hasselbalch equation to amino acid ionization states. This first amino acid we're going to look at is aspartic acid, and it's got three acidic groups in it with the pKa's that you see here. The first key pH value is 1.88, that lowest pKa value, and at this point we're going to deprotonate the backbone carboxylic acid, not the side chain carboxylic acid. At 3.65 we deprotonate the slightly less acidic side chain carboxylic acid, and then at the much higher pH of 9.60, we finally deprotonate that relatively basic or relatively low acidity ammonium group, we might say, to generate the last ionization state. And note that each ionization state is related to the previous one via loss of a proton. This final example is lysine, and again, it's got two backbone pKa's and a side chain pKa for the side chain ammonium group. The first key pH value is 2.18. At this point, the backbone carboxylic acid is deprotonated to generate an ammonium carboxylate ionization state. At 8.95, at a pH of 8.95, we deprotonate the backbone amino group. This is more acidic than the side chain amino group because of the inductive withdrawing effect of the carboxylate group. And finally, at a pH of 10.53, we deprotonate the side chain amino group to generate an amino carboxylate structure. And again, each ionization state is related to the last through the loss of a proton as we move to higher, more basic pH values.